Support Wrestle Talk. Support each other. True story, Ollie Davis wouldn't let me put Curry Man on this list, despite him having objectively the best mask in professional wrestling. He is hot, he is spicy, and he tastes great, but he's not on here, so this entire list is a sham. But Ollie Davis always gets what he wants, whether it's Luke giving up his honeymoon to report on the real reason WWE released The Rock in 2005, making Chopper Pete read Finnegan's Wake Over the Phone to him every night as he curls up in his Peter Andre duvet, or making Laurie donate both his kidneys to him, not for any emergency reason, but because, quote, it's nice to have sparesies. Point is, masks lie at the very foundation of professional wrestling. They generate hype, myth, and the aura of unknowable cool. They elevate humans into superhumans, and we see them in all corners of the biz, from Mexico to Japan to AEW's commentary table. Try not to buy replicas of all of these while drunk, because you're going to want to. It's the 15 coolest masks in wrestling history. Number 15, El Santo. No list of iconic wrestling masks would be complete without the granddaddy of them all, the silver mask of Mexican legend El Santo. There are many historically significant wrestling masks, such as the ones worn by Mr. Wrestling 2, Kendo Nagasaki, and Blue Demon, but none more so than this. This simple piece of silver fabric turned Rodolfo Guzman Huerte into El Santo, quite literally Mexico's equivalent of Superman, complete with multiple glorious movies, comic books, and even a state funeral when he died. Santo only removed his mask once in public, days before he passed away, and he's currently buried with it on. Genuinely one of Lucha Libre's greatest legends. And speaking of, number 14, Rey Mysterio. If this list was about the biggest selling masks of all time, Rey Mysterio would be number one, two, three, all the way through till 10. It's a simple design, the crucifix on the forehead, the two falcon heads on the side, and then limitless variations on color and composition. Genuinely, in an interview with Esquire magazine, Mysterio revealed there have been over 500 different designs of his mask, and he's done some truly amazing superhero designs for special occasions, like his Wolverine mask, the Hawkman one he busted out at Triple Mania 23, the famous Joker ensemble from WrestleMania 25, not to be confused with the Joker mask from Survivor Series last year that read more as doink, can't all be winners. There are cooler masks out there, but with the money that WWE have made selling Ray Ray's second face to kids, they could probably buy the moon, whack a cross and two falcon heads on it, then sell it back to NASA at an insane markup. Number 13, Hayabusa. The late, very great Hayabusa's career came to a tragic end in 2001 after a botched springboard moonsault which left him paralyzed, but he had already generated a huge amount of buzz for his stellar in-ring work and especially for his awesome mask, which still remains one of the coolest of all time. The ninja-style bandana and mouthpiece conjure up swish Mortal Kombat comparisons, combined with the eye makeup to create a look equal parts stylish and deadly. Hayabusa was so highly regarded in his prime that he even turned down a contract from WWF in the 90s to become the ace of Japanese promotion frontier martial arts wrestling. He was bloody great. Number 12, Ultimo Dragon. The greatest model of shoulder pads outside of Joan Collins, Ultimo Dragon's legacy is intertwined with that magnificent headgear. Kalisto looks cool with his circular saw-like scales and masked tail that runs down his back, but his mask pales in comparison to dragons who perfected those elements. The dragon scale mohawk, the horned brows, then yes, the most iconic part of the ensemble, the fact that the mask extends to cover his shoulders, making it look like a wonderful gay dragon has emerged from a wonderful wonderful gay tar pit. He may have only appeared in WWE for a cup of coffee in the 2000s, but Ultimo Dragon remains one of the most decorated wrestlers in Japanese history, and he did it in goddamn style. Number 11, La Parker. Wrestling bloody loves a skull, doesn't it? Fun science fact, I actually have a skull under my face, but wrestlers cannot help themselves but put skulls over their face. Isn't it ironic? Suicide from TNA had this classic look and this lovely, if smelly looking Frankenstein variant. The shield skull face masks that made 30 were to quote Cormac McCarthy rad as f and prove they were socially distancing before it was cool. And New Japan star Sonada's black mask style skeleton face he's worn to the ring makes him look like Sammy Guevara and Negan's love child looking directly at the Ark of the Covenant. But the greatest skull mask has to be the old classic of La Parka, Assassin's Creed without the meat. La Parka's full body bone look is timeless, it's iconic, and God, I want to see him do the spooky, scary skeletons TikTok dance more than anything. Number 10, Big Van Vader. One of my favorite things about some masks wrestlers is they have a mask when they wrestle, but also a super flamboyant bonus mask just for their entrance. They're messy bitches and I love it. Bushi does a wonderful line in entrance masks. His venom was wonderful. He sometimes does an amazing half and half mask like he's an indecisive and insane pizza lover. But the undisputed king of the entrance mask is Big Van Vader. The Great White's normal mask is cool enough, although he looks like a man furious about tripping and falling into a plate of spaghetti. But then there's this. His entrance gear from his time in New Japan and early WCW and 
and it's wonderful. It's like if a Cylon from original Battlestar f***ed a Xenomorph and their kid grew up to play in the NFL. In Japan, it shot steam, and it is legit the most metal thing a wrestler has ever worn. Number nine, Tiger Mask. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. You know how Batman has appeared across multiple formats, been played by multiple people in multiple different styles, but it's always just indelibly Batman? In Japanese wrestling, that's Tiger Mask. The character started life in the 1960s as a manga character, a wrestler with the head of a tiger. Yes, King from Tekken is based on Tiger Mask. Then New Japan licensed his image, and so far there have been five official wrestlers to play Tiger Mask, all with the highly dope mask design of a fluffy yet fearsome tiger. Several wrestlers to play Black Tiger, Tiger Mask's evil twin, including Eddie Guerrero one time, a brief female incarnation called Tiger Dream, and even a version called Tiger Mask W based on the anime spin-off series in 2010s. Genuinely, the only thing missing from its expansive lore is a wrestling equivalent of Carol Baskins. Number eight, Pentagon Jr. The spookiest, scariest skeleton. A lot of wrestlers combine masks with makeup, but no one in the history of wrestling has done that quite as well as Pentagon Jr. of AEW's Lucha Bros. It's just glorious presentation. He's a skeleton ninja warrior. Get on board. The mask itself is pretty great. The way it drapes down to the shoulders dates back to the martial arts headpiece of Octagon, the original Lucha Libre ninja gimmick who had an evil clone called Pentagon. Yep, there have been like nine evil Pentagon gimmick. Wrestling is fucking great. But what really turns the current generation of the character into the best presentation yet is the way the skeleton jaw makeup and the white contacts combine with the rest of the mask to give off a whole Shao Kahn but cross with Kage Maru from Virtua Fighter vibe. We should probably mention that his lucha brother Ray Phoenix also has a cool mask of flames and scales but it pales slightly next to spooky ghost ninja. Number seven, Mankind. Some masks create character from what they conceal but Mick Foley's mask created a legend from what it showed. It's a work of ugly beauty, a dog-eared variant on a Hannibal Lecter mask but with huge gaps to show off Mick Foley's big puppy dog eyes and his wild man patchy hair. Like Mrs. Foley's baby boy himself, the mask walks a thin line between unsettling and endearing. The character of Mankind debuted in that mask in 1996 and that character, propelled by his startling look, was one of the pioneering forces behind the WWF's shift towards adult-oriented programming and eventually the Attitude Era. The year before, we were living in the King Mabel and Isaac Yankum era of wrestling, so thank you Mick Foley, it will never be said enough. Thank you. Also, TNA shamelessly ripped it off with Abyss's mask, which is cool too, but nothing tops the original. Number six, Drago. I'm a dragon, says Ultimo Dragon. Hold my blood of my enemies, replies Drago. Ultimo Dragon says, I'm a dragon, like a theatre kid. Drago says, I'm a dragon, like someone who's one day going to have a haunting documentary made about them. Drago looks like Sub-Zero's favourite pet, and he's thoroughly wonderful. He took the wrestling scene by storm as part of AAA, but became more famous as a cast member of Gonzo Mexploitation's supernatural promotion Lucha Underground, which was the best, rest in peace Dario Cueto. His look was amazing, complete with moulded rubber mask, leather wings, and an awesome long black tongue that snaked out of his mouth like a river of blood. Congratulations Drago the unassessably wealthy, you are fire, you are death, you are fly as f Number five, The Fiend. What can be said about The Fiend's mask that hasn't already been said in Laurie's wonderful first explained video on The Fiend over at Parts Fun Known? Subscribe to Parts Fun Known. The mask is based on the scariest incarnation of the Joker. It was made by horror effects legend Tom Zavini. It gave the character one of the greatest pay-per-view debuts of all time at SummerSlam 2019, and it even paid off clues and hints from promos that Bray Wyatt cut years ago. It's high concept without being goofy, legitimately scary, and unlike anything else going to today. Let him in. Number four, the great Muto. Keiji Muto is a Japanese legend. Much like Finn Balor has the demon and Bray Wyatt has the fiend, Muto had an alter ego called the great Muto, who is a full nightmare. Muto has had a lot of masks in his storied career. Some of them are like head crabs. Some of them are lords of hell, but all of them are terrifying, as you'd expect from someone who has a scale named after him, which ranks how bloody a match is. Look at this one. This one looks like it's laying eggs in your dreams. There's a dinosaur on his shoulder with this costume. Hey, look, he's a cursed pirate. At G1 Supercard of Honor, he was a giant alien emperor. Why not? Sure, he doesn't stick to a theme, but when Great Muta turns up, you are guaranteed a show. And what higher compliment can you pay a wrestler than that? Number three, Kane. Some of the entries on this list are stunning in their craftsmanship, ornate patterns, intricate molding, but one of the most iconic, scariest, coolest masks in wrestling history is a slab of two-tone plastic. Kane's debut mask was perfect. Blood red, 
forehead with black charcoal claw marks across the face, a tiny slit of a mouth and tiny eyes peering from burnt darkness. Nothing but raw, simmering violence. If some of Kane's other mask would scream in all caps, I am a spooky dude. Look, my mask is made of wrinkly jam and shaped into a comedy scowl. This mask whispered very gently that Kane was going to kill you. And that is the voice you believe. Sadly, Kane's mask diminished as he became more humanized as attitude became ruthless aggression. Although his entrance mask for his Embrace the Hate run was actually pretty great and reminds me of the legit scariest mask in wrestling history. Number two, Matanza Cueto. Imagine Taz in his prime, but bigger. Imagine Brock in his prime, but faster. That is Mr. Athletic Jeff Cobb, who wrestled in Lucha Underground as Matanza Cueto, the monstrous brother of the promotion's authority figure. I really need to rewatch Lucha Underground. Matanza made his debut during LU's equivalent of a Royal Rumble and immediately he's a scary son of a bitch. Yes, other masks on this list are more exciting, other masks have more stuff going on. This is a masterpiece of less is more. Expressionless, apart from terrifying eyes in the darkness, it looks metallic and painful which conjures thoughts of a gnarled, furious monster beneath. He's like Shredder from the live action Turtles movies but even more effective. Some might see this as an odd choice for number two but it's my list and personally it's my favourite. It still scares me, so eat it. And hey, before we get to number one, if you're heading outside, please wear a mask. Now, we're not out of the COVID woods yet, and if everyone wears a mask, it greatly reduces the chances of infection spreading. It's not weakness to wear a mask, it's intelligence. And if we're smart, we can work together to avoid a second wave. And hey, you can even buy wrestling themed face marks at Pro Wrestling Tees. Link in the description. Thanks, guys. And number one, El Fakador. Could it have been anyone else? Yes, number one, Jushin Thunder Liger. I feel like it would be a grave disservice to wrestling to have one of its greatest ever not be number one. Jushin Thunder Liger is the daddy. He is Kane the Power Ranger, innovator of the Shooting Star Press, and one of the greatest light heavyweights in history. He is also a beast god in bio armor, at least according to the anime his gimmick is based on. Everything about him rules, from his entrance theme, to his outfit, to best of all, his mask. Lots of wrestlers have incorporated horns into their gimmick to great effect. Hephaesto, El Torito, Psychosis, and have managed the camp swagger of Jushin Thunder the liger, the hair, the cape, the mask, the beast mouth, horns, and whatever it is that's coming out of his forehead, he is quite simply a superhero. It is wonderfully daft, endlessly enduring, like the man himself and like his craft. And now if you'll excuse me, I've got some eBaying to do. And that's our list. What are your favorite wrestling masks? Let us know in the description. If we missed any out, don't forget to like and subscribe to WrestleTalk for more news and lists and jam that jam.